Welcome to NCSS Here For You. For over 50 years, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services has been providing access to quality psychosocial services to the residents of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. Over the years, as the needs of the community have changed, so too have the programs and services that we make available to assist children, adolescents, adults, families, and seniors. We take our role in the community seriously, and we strive to provide the highest quality services. According to Eric Erickson, a noted developmental psychologist, every person must pass through a series of eight interrelated stages over the entire life cycle. NCSS provides a continuum of services to meet the needs of individuals who at any point seek assistance. NCSS's purpose is creating a stronger community, one person at a time. Now, let's get to today's show. I'm Joe Halko, Director of Community Relations for Northwestern Counseling and Support Services, and welcome to another episode of NCSS Here For You. Each month in this program, we discuss a human services topic, and we do that with staff from one of our three direct services divisions. Our three service divisions are Behavioral Health Services, Children, Youth, and Family Services, and Developmental Services. And on occasion, we have a member from organizations that NCSS collaborate, collaborates with throughout the year. This month's episode is titled, NCSS's Employment Services Programs. NCSS has three programs that offer a range of services matched to the needs of the employer. Although these programs have similarities, there are distinct differences with each as well. Whether an employer's staffing needs are for full-time or part-time personnel, NCSS can match an individual with the appropriate skills through one of our three programs. All three programs provide considerable cost savings to the system when compared to an individual being unemployed. To discuss NCSS's employment services programs in greater detail, I'm pleased to introduce this month's guests. They are Nancy Taylor, Senior Employment Training Specialist for the Developmental Services Division, Justin Philly, Youth Employment Specialist for our Children, Youth, and Family Services Division, and Jennifer Lehman, Service Coordinator for Behavioral Health Services Division. I'd like to welcome all of you to the program this month. Thanks. Thanks. So let's start with why are there three separate employment services teams at NCSS? Um, I work in developmental services and we provide services for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, we receive funding from a grant from Voc Rehab and Medicaid waiver money. Um, our division can also provide um, ongoing support from a job coach to someone to help them achieve independence. Mm -hmm. I work with uh, youth ages 16 to 21. I work for a program called Jobs. Jobs is a program that's funded by Voc Rehab. I think that the uh, Department of Labor also funds part of what Jobs does and the Department of Corrections does. Uh, I work with kids until, or youth and young adults, uh, I should say, until they turn 22. Um, and we work under the Children, Youth, and Family Division because obviously many of our consumers start uh, before adulthood um, and they need a specialized employment team um, because a lot of the uh, clients that we serve uh, in the past have gone into the system of corrections or have kind of fallen through the cracks and uh, jobs was designed to try to stop that from happening and get people uh, skills that they need so that they can become employed and be more self-sufficient, so mm -hmm. that's what we do. And I work in the Adult Behavioral Health Division in a program called CRT, which is Community Rehabilitation and Treatment. Um, adults, mostly 18 and older, are living with mental illness, so primarily Axis 1 and Axis 2 diagnoses. And we are, we are funded mostly by um, VR and Department of Mental Health as well. Um, and you know, like your teams, I'm sure we work really closely with the treatment teams, the psychiatrists, and um, supportive counselors, case managers. So one of the things that somebody may have noticed already is that although all three of your programs are different, the individuals that you serve are different, is that you're all affiliated in some way with Voc Rehab. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, uh, an important note. Now, what criteria does someone need 
the, what do they need to meet to receive the employment services from your particular uh, um, In developmental services, we can serve anyone that has an intellectual disability. Um, we also work with Voc Rehab to serve people with a variety of disabilities. Anybody that has a disability, we can help them find a job. So when you say, if I could just follow up with one thing, so when you say anyone, that could be someone that currently the organization is serving or someone who yes. is not being yep. served by the organization? We've helped people um, on job searches that don't necessarily get other services from our agency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's through the Voc Rehab Grant. Uh, the clients that job serves are, as I said earlier, ages 16 to 21. Uh, we solely work with people that have dropped out of high school or people that go to an alternative school program such as um, Vermont Adult Learning and Community High School. Uh, community High School is changing a little bit, uh, so that's a bit of a change for jobs, but um, Community High School is a, a school for people that have been in the corrections uh, department uh, in the Department of Corrections and, and uh, probation officers or people that might have been in jail or are coming out of jail. Um, they typically have a history of having an IEP or 504 plan, which means that they had um, uh, special education while they were in high school or junior high or whatever the course they stopped their education. Um, they uh, a lot of times have uh, involvement with DCF. Um, they might have. Uh, applied for social security benefits in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have involvement with the Department of Corrections also. So those are kind of the criteria we look for for jobs uh, candidates. And in your case, Justin, they must meet one or more of those to be involved? Most or? of them meet more than one, but I, but I, I it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, but, I, but those are the factors that we look mm -hmm. at when we're looking at, uh, when we're doing an assessment for somebody that needs help from jobs. Uh, They've got to. Ha they've got to have at least one of those, but typically they have more, more than, than one. one. Yeah. Okay. And for our program, you have to be enrolled in CRT. You have to be in the CRT program. But we really pride ourselves, and this is a big um, philosophical tenant, I would say, of supported employment, is that there's a zero exclusion criteria. Um, anyone is eligible, regardless of age. Um, of course, in CRT, behavioral health, you're an adult. But regardless of age, um, previous work history. Um, Physical diagnoses, mental health diagnoses, there's really the eligibility is based on consumer choice. So when a um, client comes up to us, when an individual comes up to us and say, says, I want a job, I want to be involved in supported employment, we will write them in there, meet with them, um, enroll them. It's really, um, from the time they say they want to engage with employment, there's, there should be a really l small amount of time between the time that they say they want to be involved and the time we engage with them. Um, like I said, everyone's eligible. We really try and meet them where they're at. We take referrals from um, most of the time case managers that we work with, although we also get referrals from psychiatrists or supportive counselor or our CRT team leader. Um, but yeah, I mean, we really try and keep it open mm -hmm. to whomever. And for all of you, what are the, certainly the benefits of your clients working? the importance well of first it. and foremost they want to earn a paycheck like other people in their lives um, a sense of pride accomplishment um, and the more money they make the less reliant they are on Social Security it's mm -hmm. it, sense of independence I, I really back that I think the uh, sense of accomplishment and pride is huge I think if you've ever spent time unemployed in your life even if you're uh, an individual without a disability uh, it can be depressing, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of sit around, be idle, uh, trying to figure out what you're going to do. You, you can't get there or, you know, opportunities seem like they're not coming. Um, I think that's a difficult situation for anybody to be in. But if you couple that with um, stress, you, you know, in, in your living environment or having a, a, a harder time than usual dealing with uh, the factors in your life that you know, uh, might be contributing to your unemployment. I think to get out there, take some strides, uh, get out in the community, you know, and realize that you can be productive and you can uh, earn money on your own is huge. I think it's a, it's a huge uh, benefit to people at large. So uh, I've done this work for a long time and I'm a f real firm believer in that, you know, that work in itself is inherently therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So.
Yeah, of course, I'd have to agree with that. Um, we like to say that working shouldn't be in addition to the treatment and wellness process. It should be part of the wellness process. And I think we all, all of our programs, really, really agree with that. Self-esteem, self-actualization. Um, you know, a lot of what I've been hearing is clients want to be out in the community. They want to give back. They don't um, our, the people we work with don't want to sit at home. They, they want to get back. They want to be a community member. Um, and we, uh, another important thing to note is that we don't force our, the people we work with, we don't force them into jobs. We try and find goodness of fit. We try and m make a good match. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another thing supported employment really values is competitive employment, which means that these are jobs open to everybody um, that offer at least the minimum wage. So um, I think it's really big mm -hmm. part of mental health recovery is working and having mm -hmm. that, that self-identity of, of being productive and getting out there. And of course, making, making money is really important to all of us. So, uh, b Building on that, jobs also aims for competitive employment. Yeah, the way that a job's yeah. uh, success is counted by Voc Rehab because Voc Rehab periodically um, reviews all the cases of people that we serve. And uh, success by Voc Rehab is holding a job that's unsubsidized for 90 days uh, consecutively, and that's considered to be a rehabilitation by voc rehab standards. So we shoot for um, competitive employment yes. also. So um, I think it's a good thing for people to know coming into the program. You know, yeah. this, the, typically there's not a uh, pool of money that's going to fund work for people mm -hmm. that we serve. It's like we're out there trying to find jobs, you know, um, just like anyone else that's looking for jobs. So. I think it's also important to let the employers out there know whom we really value and work with on a daily basis that that is really our goal is to get to know you as an employer, what you need from us mm -hmm. and how we can help our clients um, fit, fit what it is that you need while also valuing their strengths, Absolutely. preferences, goals, um, just the goodness of fit for everybody. I think that's why we really strive to um, keep these relationships alive with employers and we really try and get out there, maintain positive rapport with them and we really value them. So Sometimes it can take a while because you want to find the right job for somebody mm -hmm. and you need to build a relationship with the employer, not just go in and say, well, what can I get from you? You have to just build a relationship. You plant a seed and that's how, that's the best way we, we find jobs for people. You know, and this, despite the fact that we look for competitive employment, um, the advantage we have, which I think people that are watching this that might want to know about what's the benefit of working with NCSS employment teams is we're part of Creative Workforce Solutions, which is an employment consortium, which is a, a number of uh, employment counselors from the area that get together to talk about job leads. And we have a great uh, business account manager, Chris Brock, who goes and tries to help us yep develop up and coming businesses that are looking for prospective employees. She tries to develop a relationship with them. So that's something that's been new over the last two to three years and it's really taken off. Oh, I yeah. know in this area, uh, this region is really known for the efficacy of that group. So uh, it's a good benefit. And we're yeah. all doing the same thing. We're all looking for jobs. Yeah. And instead of 10 of us from different agencies showing up at an employer's door, we collaborate every week, we share leads, we job develop together. So I may be the person you talk to about one business, Justin, another mm -hmm. business. And mm -hmm. the sharing of leads and collaborating has definitely helped us find more jobs for people. Yeah. And you know, speaking of competitive employment and the employers, so it kind of leads me to my next question. I know to a degree we've answered it already, but again, getting back to what the benefit to a business is, what do they derive when they do hire someone that is one of your clients? One of the things that comes to mind, first of all, like anyone that's walking through their door applying for a job, this is a person with a desire to work, wants to be part of a team, earn a paycheck. Um, you do, uh, for us, you have the benefit of if that person needs some support to get them independent, um, we can do that ongoing support. If they don't need somebody ongoing, I can be there. Maybe challenges come up and I need to support that person in talking to their employer or if they need to learn new skills, we can help with that. So for us, you, you do have the added benefit of that behind the scenes support if needed. Uh, you also have the benefit uh, that's, um, I mean, you've got a, a ton of benefits in terms of just 
um, expanding the horizons of your business yeah. at large. Uh, Another thing, though, there are actual tax savings on the Creative Workforce Solutions website. There's a whole piece about tax savings that you could qualify for, mm -hmm. and there's also the uh, work opportunity tax credit, which you could qualify for. Yeah. So there's a bottom-line uh, function that could help uh, with economics with your business. And um, I was looking at another website that had some interesting pieces about how managers that deal with uh, hiring individuals with disabilities expand on their skill set. Uh, they you know, um, can see potential in areas they might not have been able to see potential in the past um, and have a different uh, outlook on hiring, which I think is just good for the health of the business. Um, and I guess uh, for, from, from what else I had read that there's a 2.5 uh, times your, your investment in an uh, employee that you hire with a disability in terms of a return. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's two and a half times what you put into it monetarily to get that employee trained, get them off the ground. Uh, will come back to you. So I, th I think that, um, you know, also uh, retention rates are, are typically better. I was looking for some statistics to support that, but I couldn't find them. But I know uh, in the years of doing this work that I've heard many times that if you can hire somebody with a disability, get them up and running and, and uh, support them, that they will typically hold that job longer than an uh, mm -hmm. employee without a disability in a similar position. So. Absolutely. And, and for our program, there is a, speaking of statistics, there's um, a supported employment statistic out there, and it, I forgot the exact statistic, but it's something about 70% of people in the CRT population want to work, and 60-something percent of them can successfully work with the mm -hmm. right supports. So we in the CRT program like to think that we can be those supports for, for the client. Um, we've also found that our, our clients really want to go to work. They really want to get out there, and when they're there, they really give it 100%. Um, I think the benefit to working with our um, supported employment clients is that you do have myself and we have, we have we in the CRT program program have two um, other employment specialists and we could be on the job with them, um, time limited for our program, um, help them process social stressors, work stressors, um, really job clubs we have. I mean all these foundations and supports set up around making our clients successful. Um, and I think it's very deliberate. If our clients really come to us and want to engage in our program, they want to be successful, and they will reach out um, to whatever support they can to make it successful and make it work. So it, it is definitely really nice to see. I think you also add um, s skills that if you have a, a, a workforce that's people that have uh, gotten a job from a kind of linear perspective where they you know, started at a lower level and just kind of worked their way up the chain or got the education they needed and just uh, got the job they wanted right out of the gates, that's fantastic. But I think if you can add people that have had a, a, a different route to employment, uh, somebody that has overcome adversity, you get the flexibility, the resiliency, you know, the creativity that comes mm -hmm. along with that. And I think that uh, there's, you know, as much of that needed as you can get in business loyalty. nowadays, you know. I mean, not just yeah. loyalty, but like, hey, why don't we try things a little differently? You know, I, I've encountered this challenge before, you know. So I think if you think about the uh, route that people take to work, I think if you look at somebody uh, that, you know, may have a disability, might come from a low socioeconomic status and has worked their way up the ladder, um, they may have encountered challenges that look similar to other challenges you would encounter in the business world, and uh, it's just a benefit. Mm -hmm. so. Now, we talked a little bit about some of the partnering that's done, uh, and I know that it's immense in, in trying to get all of these individuals placed, but what community organizations does CSS partner with on an ongoing basis uh, as you go through trying to place For us, I mean, the first one that comes to mind for me is Voc Rehab, because we get our funding for job developing, our grant money through them, and the Creative Workforce Solutions team. Um, if a client gets a job and he needs a special, you know, he needs some boots or something to wear and doesn't have the money, Boke Rehab will cover that cost. Um, Boke Rehab, a lot. Uh, we, we interface with the Department of Labor also, the jobs team does, because uh, at times we do work experiences with them through the Workforce uh, Investment Act, which is run by the Department of Labor. We interface with Weber, which is a right. Vermont Association yeah. of Business Industry and Rehabilitation. What Weber does is they kind of, uh, the way I look at them, like they're almost like a translator uh, in a way, because they will 
do assessments for business uh, about, you know, um, how ready their environment is to work with somebody with with uh, disability. Uh, they'll do assessments with consumers to see, uh, you know, what do they need in the workplace if someone gets injured while they're on the job and all of a sudden they have a disability. Weber will get in there and try to make adjustments and help make accommodations. So the way I see them is like they are somebody that can give guidance to a, a business that's uh, trying to build their workforce and include people with disabilities mm -hmm. or some business that might have uh, somebody with a disability that has been a longtime staffer that they need help uh, trying to accommodate. So Weber handles that kind of thing. And then Voc Rehab, like Nancy said, uh, I see them as kind of like the uh, nuts and bolts behind the scene. Like we do the mental health, uh, social, emotional stuff, and then we go to Voc Rehab and say, Okay, so we've gotten this person to where they're feeling confident, they're ready to work, you know, now we need some help paying for their training or we need some help getting steel toe boots because they're going to be in an environment where they need that kind of equipment or something. Um, and Department of Labor helps with training. Um, I feel like we're pretty collaborative. Yeah, the only other one I'd mention is probably Chamber of Commerce, which is, yes. Um, yes. we recently did the Chamber of Commerce business mixer, which was great, just networking and meeting all the community partners. And um, we have a breakfast, a recognition breakfast coming up in oh, August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would agree with what, what you all said. VR, I like to explain to the people I work with, is another additional layer of support. Um, they're amazing. Yeah. I think I have yeah. contact with them every day. So it, it is, it really is an additional layer of support and it's nice seeing all these community partners coming together for the common good of getting people to work Yes. Yeah. and fostering those relationships in the community. So. Now, what is the uh, job developer's role in setting up employment services? Well, in DS, um, first thing I would do is meet with an individual. We have a person-centered assessment that we do is to find out what it is they want to do, what they like, what they don't like, the kind of environment they want to be in. Um, and it, first and foremost, it's spending time with the person to find out what they want because you don't want to just put somebody in a job. It should be something they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, help with a resume, with the application process. Um, if they need help or if they want me to be on an interview with them, I can do that. Um, kind of assessing the job site to see, I mean, if it's somebody that's going to need support, what kind of support they need. Uh, you'd also want to be aware of um, whether the job is, how the job is funded, if it's paid under the table or if it's paid right. via check. I mean, there are certain situations, uh, I think it's pretty easy for people to sometimes find jobs that are appealing, but there's no wor workman's compensation built yeah. in, there's no taxes coming out of the checks, they're paid under the table. So I think part of the thing that a, a developer is going to do is take a look at that. Um, you know, I help a number of young men that want general labor work a lot, and one of the sources for that is Craigslist. But unfortunately, with Craigslist, you don't know what you're going to get. So yeah. one of the things you, I would do would be to talk with the prospective employee ahead of time and say, can I have a release so that I could yeah. try to do some job development, you know, and so I have the parameters of, of, of what the person's comfortable uh, with me divulging, you know, and so I have some... Uh, idea uh, that it's okay for me to go and talk with an employer and say this is what we're looking for what can you offer and you know how is it structured also so it's, it's mm -hmm. important so job developing looks slightly different in the CRT program I would say than it would in DS or in uh, children youth and families we have clients that come to us some of them already have jobs um, and then it's the question, do we want to see, see if they'll get involved in VR, or do we want to help add some additional layers of support? Um, but most of the time, we have clients that come to us and they want to work. Maybe they've worked in the past, they've been a little symptomatic, they've had to um, take a leave, and just the engagement process, it, it can take a while and to build rapport with people and have them trust you. Um, typically, we'll do, we'll do a referral, we'll do an employment assessment, we'll get the necessary releases to VR signed. Um, we'll, go out in the community and we'll, we'll see what's out there. Um, a new initiative that I think I know DS has done um, also is trying to adopt the version, the, um, what's the word, adopt the notion of job carving and trying to not, like I said earlier, not squeeze people into molds that are already existing, but to carve out jobs that are not necessarily there, that might be a little hidden from, from the eye and taking people's strengths and, and really what they, their goals are, what they want to do and yeah. 
making the job, you know, making opening jobs that are a good fit, not trying to force them into anything. So I think that's that's something new that we've really been working on um, in St. Albans and the employers are, for the most part are so open to talking to us and at least learning about our program and, and if things aren't open right away, just keeping that relationship alive. Um, yeah. You can also set up job shadows if, yeah. if you have yep. somebody that, you know, doesn't really know what they want to do. Maybe they have a ballpark idea, mm -hmm. but they don't know what industry, how they want to do it. You can sure. set up job shadows, you know, you can uh, give them small experiential yep. uh, pieces where they can learn about the job and then you have a more accurate depiction of how you want to develop And a sometimes job. what that does is um, it, it results in paid employment. If it doesn't, it they sort of widen their network of people that they know. Yeah. They have somebody that they can add to their resume, a reference, new skills. So it's always a good thing. So these really are some of the other options that are available to individuals that might not really have a total sense, yep. as you said earlier, Nancy, mm -hmm. about what they would like to do. But they're willing to try certain yeah. things. And there's these various um, kind of sub-programs that people can get involved in, um, yeah. you know, maybe before they land on their feet in, yep. in their entirety. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, are there any other uh, types of supports that are offered to the client that we haven't discussed? In developmental services, uh, we have the option of an on-the-job support person if needed mm -hmm. and with the goal of helping this person become independent um, or as independent as they can be. That It's that person's job. They need to have ownership, but maybe they need some support, you know, moving to another task mm -hmm. or learning a new skill and that can be ongoing it can be short term it's whatever the person needs mm -hmm. uh, jobs uh, case managers are mental health case managers so we take a look a holistic look at the person you know a, a lot of times uh, a job is it, it, you know we're called jobs but jobs is an acronym for jump on board for success but to achieve a success you have to uh, typically look at several different facets of a person's life. Uh, typically, if you are somebody that's coming to jobs for support, you might not have finished your education, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have a probation officer that is uh, making sure that you have certain things in your life and, and you might have to fulfill those requirements. Uh, there are many factors that go into the typical jobs referral, you know, or client's life. So. Uh, what I look at as supports, I, I look at things like, you know, since I work at NCSS and I'm a case manager, if I meet with a client who several sessions in a row is talking about something that they can't get off their mind, it's a recurrent problem for them, I might suggest individual counseling, you know, mm -hmm. if they want to do that, we're, that we have in-house people that we could refer them to, you know. Uh, similarly, if they're on psychiatric medications, but they feel like they're not really working well for them or they want a change, we could do a, psych, a psychiatric referral in-house, you know. So uh, from a job standpoint, I feel like there are many things that, that you can, that we plug people into that come and work with us because they are things that they need support with before they can really get to the point where they can find the job they want to find. Sure. So, you know, education, uh, primary care doctors, um, you know, mental health support services. I think it's all wrapped into becoming a successful employee through jobs, so. Well, and that's a, a good way for us to end because believe it or not, our time is up. It's flown by this month. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I want to thank my special guests, Nancy Taylor, Justin Philly, and Jennifer yeah. Lehman for being on the show today and sharing their insights on how hiring NCSS Employment Services clients can result in a win-win for the employer and the employee. I also want to thank you, the viewer, for spending time with, with us again this month. I'm Joe Halco, and I'll be back next month with another episode of NCSS here for you. This has been another episode of NCSS here for you. We hope that you found today's discussion informative and educational. For over 50 years, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services has been providing access to quality psychosocial services to the residents of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. 
Over the years, as the needs of the community have changed, so too have the programs and services that we make available to assist children, adolescents, adults, families, and seniors. Thanks once again for tuning in this month. NCSS's purpose remains creating a stronger community, one person at a time.